In 1925, a young Indian physicist, Satyendra Bose, sent Einstein a paper he'd been unable to publish. Bose had attempted to apply the mathematics of how light particles behave to whole atoms. Einstein realized the importance of this concept and did some further calculations. He predicted that on reaching extremely low temperatures, just a hair above absolute zero, it might be possible to produce a new state of matter that followed quantum rules. It would not be a solid or liquid or gas. It was given a name almost as strange as its properties, a Bose-Einstein condensate. For the next 70 years, people could only dream about making such a condensate, which has never been seen in nature. Matter can exist in various states. Atoms at high temperature always form gases. If you cool the gas, it becomes a liquid. If you cool the liquid, it becomes a solid. But under certain circumstances, if you cool atoms far enough to extremely low temperatures, they undergo a very strange transformation. They undergo an identity crisis. So let me show you what I mean by an identity crisis. When you go to low temperatures, the quantum mechanical properties of the atoms become important. These are very strange, very unfamiliar to us, but in fact, each one of these atoms starts to display wave-like properties. So instead of points like that, you have little wave packets like that moving around. It's really difficult for me to explain just why that is, but that's the way it is. Now, as you go to very low temperatures, the size of these packets gets longer and longer and longer, and then suddenly, if you get them cold enough, they start overlapping. And when they overlap, the system behaves not like individual particles, but particles which have lost their identity. They all think they're everywhere. This little wave packet over here can't tell whether it's this one or that 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 one. It's there and it's there and it's there. They're all in one great big quantum state. They're all overlapping. They're all doing the same thing. And what they're doing to a good approximation is they're simply sitting at rest. This Bose-Einstein condensate is very difficult to imagine or to visualize. I could imagine what it's like to be an atom running around gaily, freely bouncing into things, sometimes going fast, sometimes going slow. But on the Bose condensate, I'm everywhere at once. I've lost my identity. I don't know who I am anymore. I'm at rest and all the other atoms around at rest, but they're not other atoms around. We're all just one great big quantum system. There's nothing else like that in physics and certainly not in human experience. So just to think about this causes me wonder and confusion. Dan Kleppner and his MIT colleague, Tom Greitak, began to try to make a Bose-Einstein condensate in hydrogen. As we started out the search for Bose-Einstein condensation, our enthusiasm grew because hydrogen seemed like such a wonderful atom to use. It had everything going for it. It had its light mass. That means that the uh, atoms will condense at a higher temperature than other atoms would the atoms interact with each other very, very weakly. All the signals seem to be pointing to the fact that hydrogen was the atom for getting to Bose-Einstein condensation. Kleppner's idea was to cool the hydrogen atoms by making use of their magnetic poles. He used a strong magnetic field to create a cluster of atoms in a cold trap. Unfortunately, sometimes one atom flipped another, which triggered a release of energy that raised the temperature. It was a frustrating time for us because our methods were so complicated, we were having a hard time moving forward. Like any great adventure, the pursuit of science offers no guarantee of success. But for the godfather of ultra-cold atoms, persistence eventually paid off. In 1998, after 20 years of struggling to obtain a condensate in hydrogen, Dan Kleppner finally succeeded. 
for a few fleeting moments, his dream came true. Of course, we were delighted, and I think everyone was delighted, because we'd been working on it for so long. It's kind of embarrassing to have this group which helped start the work and was working away there fruitlessly while everyone was enjoying success. When we got it, everyone was happy. To see that an effort which lasted for 20 years, which took so much patience, frustration, and tenacity, to see that succeed is just emotional. It's liberating. I will never forget this standing ovation which Dan Klettner received at the Varenna Summer School when he announced Bose Einstein condensation in hydrogen. Everybody just got up and gave, it was sort of like an opera where everybody just cheered and people were crying and uh, because everybody realized that they had, they had finished the race, but too late and, and it wasn't going to work out, but in some sense they had really stimulated the whole field. So it was very, uh, very moving, very moving moment. For the pioneers who had realized Einstein's dream and created condensates, it was the end of an extraordinary decade of physics. Now there was a new challenge, to work out what to do with them.